swing and a miss, guys. Hey, this is Omar Alvarado of All About Rush, and today I want to talk about Rush's misses. Um, they're not their, not their wives. <laughs> I'm talking about them missing opportunities. Um, yeah, well, that was a bad joke. So during Rush's career, you know, you know, when they their LPs, their records came out, their recordings, and then they did their live concerts. We were always wanting us Rush fans to for them to play certain songs, and you know, ultimately. There was always a group of Rush fans that were disappointed because obviously they couldn't play everything. Um, they had to have their set list that they felt comfortable with, comfortable with, and we'd have to just accept what their uh, set list was. Of course, pretty much every time they nailed it. I mean, their their tours were outstanding. Their song selection was great. Um, you know, I think there were a few times where they indulged in in certain records, like for example, in the Snakes and Arrows tour. They played a lot of songs from Permanent Waves and the Clockwork Angels tour. They played a lot of songs from um, Power Windows, you know, stuff like that. But we didn't mind. There was a lot of great stuff going on there. Over the years, to me, I think there were some songs uh, or some opportunities that they just missed. And there was quite a few of them, actually. But in this video, I'm just going to talk about three of them. Three misses um, for Rush that, man they could have been home runs amongst the other home runs that they hit i do want to give a shout out to the rush fans youtube uh, channel because when i i did a, a collaboration with them and we were talking about rush misses uh, they were going to do, do a video which they actually did do a video on rush misses and we kind of came up with the idea somewhat at the same time and they beat me to the punch they published their video so i'm gonna have a link to that in the description below so you can see some other misses that rush had but um yeah they beat me to the punch jerks so the first miss that i think many people will agree is that they never played different strings live different strings is uh, a beautiful song on the permanent waves record that came out in 1980 every song on that album is is a knockout great song and every song on that album has been played live except different strings and different strings is such a beautiful song it has a lot of interesting characteristics but I think the thing that many people miss from hearing that song live is like the extended, an extended solo at the end. Uh, as many know, the song fades away while Alex is playing lead guitar and it's pretty fantastic and it just fades away and like, oh, the song is too short. It's just, you know, the, the piano is so tastefully played by Getty or whoever. I don't know if it's Getty actually who plays piano on that song. I have to. I'll probably confirm it in the comments or maybe I'll confirm it over here. In any case, you know, beautiful lyrics. It's, it's a fan favorite. They never played it live. So to me, that's one of Rush's great misses in their career, not having played different strings live. Another one of Rush's great misses that I think is that they never played the whole Fear anthology live. Now, I say the Fear anthology because I think we have to stop saying the fear trilogy because it's not a fear trilogy it's a fear anthology it used to it was a fear trilogy for a long time for example what i'm talking about uh, for those maybe who are not in the know rush wrote three songs on three consecutive records as part of a trilogy and they started with part three first then they did part two and then part one so part three of fear was witch hunt on moving pictures and then part two of fear was in the next record signals the song was the weapon and then part one of fear came out on the grace under pressure record and that song was the enemy within so they did it in reverse order three two one so that was the fear trilogy and grace under pressure came out in 1984 so you know it was the fear trilogy for the longest time then vapor trails comes out in 2002 lo and behold there's a part four of fear it's called freeze and that's a great song actually and my hope was that they would have played the fear anthology now no longer a trilogy it's an anthology the fear anthology on the vapor trails tour and they didn't do it they didn't play freeze uh live ever and i think that was a miss that would have been a great opportunity or maybe even in the next tour who knows it would have been a great opportunity to play the whole the story of fear, the fear anthology as I call it, would have been, um, fantastic. Would have been fantastic. 
and probably they could have thrown songs like Double Agent or Nocturne before the Fear Anthology because it would just set such a, a such a brooding mood uh, for the topic of, of that anthology. So uh, the second miss that Rush had in their career that they could have capitalized on and would have been a great thing was playing the whole Fear Anthology on the Vapor Trails tour. So we come to my number one miss by Rush. There are more misses. Uh, actually, before I give the number one, I'll give a runner-up miss is that they didn't tour in Australia and New Zealand. That's not a, I mean, I call it a miss because I know of many fans in that area, not personally, but you know, from what I've read and stuff, that they would have loved to have Rush go down there. Uh, but they just never, never got the opportunity to. So the number one miss of Rush to me is that they didn't play Losing It during the Clockwork Angels tour. Losing It is the, is the song on Signals where it featured a violin in the song. And when Clockwork Angels came out and we heard that on the tour, they were gonna tour with a, a string ensemble, immediately I thought, great, they're gonna play Losing It on this tour because they have the violins, they have all the strings actually. It would have been fantastic if they would have included an, an, an entire string ensemble uh, for losing it. It would have, I think it would have been sensational, but for some reason they, they didn't do it. And I think that was a huge miss. And even though on the R40 tour, they did bring in losing it that which they had never played live. Um, they played it on the R40 tour and they did have, you know, whenever they played it, they had a, you know, a violin, a violinist um, play the song with them on the stage. But I think that song belonged in the Clockwork Angels tour with the string ensemble. Uh, but unfortunately it didn't happen. And maybe they realized that they could have done that on that tour. And I think it would have been performed better. I don't think losing it was their best performance in the R40 tour. Uh, I think, um, yeah, it could have been better in the Clockwork Angels tour. That's really my point. So the number one miss of Rush is not playing losing it during the Clockwork, the Clockwork Angels tour. So anyway, those are my misses that I think are pretty significant in Rush's history. If you think there are any other bigger misses that Rush did, uh, why don't you put those in the comments? I would really love to hear what you think. That's it for me for right now. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.